I was born in Scarborough, uh, East Toronto, and uh, to a Roman Catholic father and a Presbyterian uh, mother. Uh, my mother was uh, like Scottish Canadian, and my father was uh, Italian Canadian. He was he migrated or er, immigrated to Canada when he was a boy uh, with his with several of his brothers and sisters, and uh, I grew up really uh, sort of in the middle of those that two those two worlds. I grew up uh, with my mother, my father, my grandmother, and I had a sister as well. On my mother's side, basically no relatives, no cousins or aunts or uncles or anything like that. On my father's side, though, we, you know, he had five brothers and five sisters. Uh, there's a great majority of them here in Canada, so I had lots of cousins, and you know, when we had lots of uh, family uh, get-togethers and gatherings uh, when I was young, and it was actually really, really, I, I really felt a connection to my uh, Italian roots. Uh, through that side of my family. Now, I attended uh, a Catholic school uh, at, growing up uh, through elementary school and into high school. But at the same time, because I also lived with my grandmother, who was my my mother's mother, who was uh, had a, a Scottish Canadian uh, background, and she was Presbyterian, and she used to attend a Presbyterian church. I used to also go with her to the Presbyterian Church and participate in its activities in the community because uh, at the part of the community that I lived in that uh, was a little bit more dominant than the, the Catholic Church community. It was a little bit further away. And also, uh, as I got older, I started to participate in the Catholic Church as a, an altar boy and, and stuff like that, and just generally attending uh, the service as well. My mother passed away when I was 14. I was very, very close with my mother, me and my sister, and my, we were not as close with our father. We had problems getting along with our father, and so, and that, so that didn't increase what had just happened. I mean, I was 14, I was in high school, you know, that's supposed to be the time when, you know, as a, as a person experiencing the world, that's when you have all the fun, you're, you know, you're engaging with all kinds of groups, you start to define your path in life, where you're going to go on, are you going to go to college, are you going to go to university? But I couldn't do that because I was too busy, you know, going to the hospital or, you know, maybe my mother was going to die that day or she was so sick that we, we just, we couldn't, after school was to the hospital and that was basically our life, you know, seven days a week until she eventually passed away. Slowly and slowly, the further I got, the older I got, this was starting to play a major effect in my life and it was being compounded with the fact of uh, you know, not wanting to be around um, our father and that type of stuff. And so by the time I was 23, I mean, it was really, it was being, it was, I didn't realize it at the time of how much it was actually affecting my decisions I was making in life, the people I was hanging around with, you know, the, the lifestyle I was leading, you know, it was, it was a major, uh, was, was a major problem. You know, you go out, you drink, you know, you maybe you smoke and cigarettes or whatever you do. And I mean, I had a problem leaving it. And so not because I liked it and not because it was good for me. I mean, just because it was what I knew for the last 10 years of my life. And it was my social network. It was it, those people in this group of so-called friends, you know, who spent their days being intoxicated, you know, to go to get out to escape the realities of their own life they were my social support network and so how could I leave them when I had nobody else? And I moved to a community that was uh, culturally diverse, religiously diverse. I mean I was almost in a culture shock because I had been sort of secluded in this community. And after being there for a few years uh, I made, a, you know, lots of new friends, right? I moved from a Catholic school to a public school. I had some close friends in the community who uh, were uh, investigating Islam and were sort of uh, preaching it, and eventually they uh, also converted to Islam or became accepted Islam as a truth. And then uh, I had, I engaged in dialogue with them. Uh, it was actually 
a very positive. It wasn't uh, a very uh, aggressive dialogue where we were arguing with each other, but it was very it was very calm and you know and just I I questioned them on on the things that they were saying that that they were claiming Islam uh, was saying, and you know they would they would if they didn't know they would say uh, they would honestly say they didn't know or if if I had stumped them on a question they just they wouldn't push it and try to uh, get aggressive with it but they would go and find out and come back the answer to it and then answer saying no 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 this is actually what what the case is and uh, uh, going through this process is what actually led me to uh, really internally saying you know to myself or making sort of a prayer that if this is what uh, God wants for me then I'm willing to do it whatever whatever he wants for us and so I proceeded to get a, an English translation of uh, the Quran and some other uh, supporting documentation or and books I started to read through them and I really felt that the, you know the way that the document the supporting books uh, spoke about uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and that and about his character and even about what his uh, the, what his enemies used to say about him and the people who inquired about him the way they asked about him and the responses they got I really felt that uh, he wasn't a liar right and because in the end because the 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 chain of uh, transmission of the of the texts are are unquestionable, right? That was the first principle. So then, the next thing was, okay, is is he a liar? And I and I felt that no, he's not a liar. And I don't think he's a he was a he was a madman. And so, from there on, I started to try to learn about the prayer. I started to learn more about the finer details of the religion. I was looking for things on how to pray, how to pray, and then. I went, I seen a, a friend of mine that I went to high school with who I knew who was Muslim but he was young so he wasn't necessarily practicing, practicing as much or that I didn't see and so now that I knew about Islam and I knew that he was practicing and so I was I came up to him and I would ask him you know how do you guys pray how do you pray because I know there's some bowing there's some you know prostration like and he was sort of not avoiding the que the the question, but he the, his answer was was just like, I don't know. You got to come to the masjid. You know what I mean? I'm like, well, when are you guys going to the masjid and uh, to the mosque? And he said, well, we're going on uh, we're going on Thursday. I'm like, can I come? <laughs> he didn't even have to sell me. And he's like, he's like, yeah, sure. You know. So we ended up going, and we went there just in time for for the uh, I believe it was for the sunset prayer. Or maybe it was the afternoon prayer. And when I go, went there and I saw the the prayer, the salat, right, the 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 way that Muslims pray, it was like something turned inside of me. I, right then and there, I there was any doubt that I had had, basically left, you know, because I had researched a lot on, on self help and on on meditation, and when I saw that, I. I I knew that there is no way that that could have been made up. Like uh, inside of me, I just like that had to have been something that was revealed, right? That was real, real knowledge. It wasn't just something that was made up. And so, actually, I was kind of, I was kind of shocked. And then I went down and I, I, I made my first ablution and prepared myself to pray. And then I, I uh, followed a brother in in praying my first prayer, and then. Shortly after that e evening, there was there was a, a a talk by the imam at the at the mosque, and then uh, shortly after that, I ended up taking my uh, shahada.